I'd like to welcome everybody to this episode uh, of The Complete Advisor. The, this one will be a treat. We're going to talk about a topic uh, that I think a lot of advisors have wondered about through the years. And we're going to talk about it with a person who knows it so very, very well and has a lot of experience and a lot of experience in the business. So what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the case for radio. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, our special guest here, John Dombrowski from, uh, well, Scottsdale, which would be the Phoenix Metro. And you've been on radio for a very long time. Yeah, about 20 plus years. 20 plus, yeah. 20 plus years. So the gold standard, so a lot of people, when you think of radio and you think of, there's that dream. One, it's fun for mm -hmm. those of us that like to, you know, put headphones on and talk. To hear our voices. To hear our voices. Right. Uh, but there's that dream maybe of, you know, one day the you know, getting picked up and being the next Dave Ramsey or... Um, you know, all those different, all those different radio uh, and TV hosts. Uh, but the reality, I mean, the, the reality is there's a lot of work. There's a lot of the backside to it. And that's what I want to explore. And so the first thing I want to do, uh, John, before we talk more about you, because you're a fascinating guy. Oh, right. And uh, you're an awesome guy, too. Um, folks, you'll just have to take, you'll, you'll see that. I will make the case for radio and we'll make the case for uh, John Dombrowski as well. But uh, so... Let's talk about the case for the radio, and, and let's talk about the pros. Let's look at that. And I was doing a little bit of homework. Mm -hmm. And so you're out there in the Phoenix Metro, 4.8 million people. Um, big audience. Big audience. And, you know, the interesting thing is the radio stations that you're on, I've got them up over here. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're on a radio station. It's a KKNT and then KFYI. Mm -hmm. and, and another KQNA. KQ and A, mm -hmm. um, another, and with those, they are, um, so one is more talk, one is uh, KKNT is the Patriot. I don't know if you knew, you actually, I bet you knew this, but um, in the Phoenix Metro, uh, there are, uh, it's got a 10% higher veteran population than the rest of the United States. Interesting. I didn't know that. So how did you select, so let's talk about how you made the decision to get on radio. So there was another advisor at one point that I met and was a part of uh, Creative uh, many, many years ago. And he was on radio. And he would, uh, when you would do your learn to earn programs that you would put on for advisors mm -hmm. to be able to come out to Kansas City and uh, learn about what other advisors are doing. Uh, and we had a discussion about it. And I thought that that would be something I'd want to bring into my practice as another way to market. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, after going back and forth with this individual, trying to understand how they were um, doing this, as you said, many advisors are interested in radio, but, yep. but we don't know how to get started. Uh, and it was a very interesting conversation we had. Uh, I, I am not necessarily a person that likes to get up and talk in front of people. And even doing radio, is in, it, it's a total different mm -hmm. uh, way to market, right? Because you're sitting, if you're doing a radio show yourself, to just sit in front of a microphone and just start talking about something. Uh, and if you're not prepared, uh, it may yeah. come off as, you know, we really are, you know, are reading something. You don't want to do that. So, uh, but anyway, after many conversations with him, uh, I decided to go ahead and make that decision to move forward. So when you decided to do that, mm -hmm. you had a lot of decisions to make, which is, you know, the first one that I would think of is what radio station? Right. How did you, how did you make that decision? So again, this person was uh, broadcasting on a, a radio station that was talk radio rather mm -hmm. than uh, some type of a music lineup. A lot of the, the stations out there, if it's, if it's music, the challenge is, is that they really don't have a slot for you for uh, talk radio. Yeah. And that's not, their, that's not what they do, right? Um, so you have to find a station, first of all, that is going to be open to talk radio. And uh, it is very uh, – today, there's so many advisors out there doing radio. Yeah, there really you know, are. There, there wasn't 20 years ago when I was doing this. It was uh, limited. Uh, but today, it's very common. So now, it's just a question of um, you know the stations probably you want to be on because those are the stations you're listening to in your neighborhood, in your local area. Uh, but what we did was is um, we found a spot. It's interesting – we couldn't get a half hour. We couldn't get an hour because the time was all taken by the local stations. Yeah. But they had a way for us to negotiate about a five-minute slot. Five minutes. Five minutes. So it was when one show ended at, say, 7.57 in the morning or whatever the time was. 
And then the commercials ran for the mm-hmm. next three minutes to the top of the hour, and then they ran two minutes of commercials. So instead of running those five minutes of commercials, we bought five minutes of time. And we That's were interesting. yeah, it was it was interesting, and it was a cost effective way for us to get our foot in the door. I wonder if anybody does that now. That's almost like that's almost like. Block, buying the commercial block like that, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Actually. Yeah, that's right. So we bought five minutes of commercial spot, and I did a five-minute blurb every day. So it was from, and I, I'm forgetting, I think the time was actually 4.57 p.m. Mm-hmm. to 5.02. So it was a drive, almost a drive time slot. Yeah, perfect. Right? Yeah. You know, five days a week, Monday through Friday. And in that five minutes, initially, I didn't really know what to do. So I was trying to write content for five minutes. Now, five minutes in radio really goes by so fast. You can't imagine. We've probably been talking for five minutes now, and it seems like a minute. Yeah. Uh, So that five minutes was, I wanted to get so much into it. And I think I, I, it was the wrong approach. I just needed to be a little bit more natural. But that mm-hmm. just comes with time and anything as you start to perfect something. So, but that was a, a good start to my radio career, five minutes. So did they bring to you uh, all kinds of demographics and here's our statistics and, and to, to justify the spend and the time? And, or were you just happy to, like, I got this spot and I'm taking it? It was not the most highly uh, listened to station that I was on. So the answer is absolutely not. <laughs> they were not paying for that data and for those analytics at all. I would ask those questions and they would say, well, you know, this is a good time to, you know, this is our you know, best person we mm-hmm. have on between this and this time. And so there's most likely a lot of people listening, but in reality, there wasn't. Yeah. And we weren't really getting any response uh, from, from it. But it was still, I always looked at it as, hey, I'm paying to learn something here. Yeah. And it was a good way for me to get my foot in the door and really learn how to uh, communicate via, you know, the radio. Mm-hmm. Now, a little bit about you, though. So I'm mm-hmm. going to, I'm going to call quasi BS on something. Uh-oh. I've never done this on the on a podcast. Um, your and your comfort level and you being in front of people. Um, you're an amazing for people who don't know this. And I got to see this live. You are, have an amazing singing voice. Uh oh. And yeah. I'm not going to ask you to sing, yeah. although if you wanted to. Um, but you are an amazing piano player, too. Uh, do you think that played into maybe your comfort being on radio? Your ability to perform, to, to be out there like that? Uh, yeah, you almost in a way when when you're performing up on stage, if I was in, you know, playing piano or singing, whatever, I, I'm behind something. Mm-hmm. You know, so you kind of have a little bit yeah. of shelter, as uh-huh. it would be. Um, but I would say with radio, what was different about the radio is it's it's a little lonely out there. You're kind of out on an island if mm-hmm. you're if you're talking uh, by yourself. Right now, this is an easy easy uh, way for us to do some type of a um, whether it's a radio show or the podcast mm-hmm. that you're doing right now, which I think is fantastic for advisors to be able to. Uh, learn from people who have been in the industry for some time, and I, I enjoy it. I listen to your podcasts, and and oh. I I learn from the people who have been in business, whether it's been for a shorter period of time than me or a longer period of time than me. You know, we all get caught in our routine yeah. and our ruts, uh, but there are certainly things we can gather from just about everyone, and so it's great to to learn. Well, let's talk about uh, let's talk about content mm-hmm. because I am. Um, in the grand scheme of things, content and there's there's a ton of work which I'm going to ask you about that the you know the backside of what goes on backstage. But I was listening to your uh, show this morning. Mm-hmm. I was listening to the latest episode, and you talked about um, so we're, we're rolling into tax time. We're, we're we're right at that season, and in fact, that episode was I think on the fifteenth. It was itself. yeah, it was on April fifteenth, yep. right? And so you talked a little bit about taxes. You then you talked about some current event things. Uh, you talked about um, banking, and what I liked about it is you talked about banking as it would. What did it mean to me, mm-hmm. me personally? And then you also talked about uh, USB or the uh, charging, uh, the charging station. Oh, I right, I great. brought that up. Yeah, that's. I did read an article about that. Right. Yeah. Somebody told me. I, I read a thing once that said that if you use public Wi-Fi, it's like. Uh, it's like picking up a toothbrush on the floor of an airport and putting it in your mouth. That's how safe it is. Uh, but so the con- but content, right? Where are you coming up with content? Because that's a lot of work, right there. It is. Um, I would say that there is a lot to talk about. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And believe it or not, I think the content probably isn't as important as many people would think. It's more about a perspective that maybe you could put on whatever that content is Mm -hmm. and how you could allow people to receive that information and maybe use it in their own personal life. So talking about something as simple as uh, not plugging in your phone and into the airport receptacle, the UBS Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. receptacle, is it USB? USB, <laughs> USB. We just we just smeared a bank. USB. <laughs> uh, you you don't want to do that. They're saying take that and get your regular plug and plug it into an outlet mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there's now apparently uh, people have figured out how to infiltrate and uh, potentially spread a virus through the USB. Yep. Uh, ports in airports or in hotels. You know, in the lamp at a hotel, you can plug your phone in. Uh, yeah. Don't do that. They're saying. Uh, so it's it's just that in itself, being able to talk about that on a financial radio show. It doesn't make any sense, but I get feedback from that, from people sending me an email, hey, thanks for that tip, or mm-hmm. that was great. Even you just brought it up. It's like, wow, okay, I didn't think of that. But um, So it doesn't all have to be about financial issues. It can be about day-to-day issues. Yeah, because you. Yeah, I, I think that's great because as an advisor, you're – you're t- it, it, you can only talk about money and alpha and you know, 60, 40, 70, 30 for so long. Um, and that's something that somebody can find anywhere. But to, to have a conversation about what that bank, what banking issues mean to me, especially since you guys are out closer in proximity, maybe I don't know if that made more headlines out your way because uh, probably Phoenix not. Here. It was national, but um, <clears throat> but it's certainly something people are concerned about, mm-hmm. you know, the banks. People are constantly getting questions about, hey, um, is it true that the government's going to seize my 401k? Mm. I mean, I, that is a, that's a, a, a scary thought. Uh, but, uh, you know, I try to assure people that I don't believe that's going to be the case. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they, people read things, they hear things, uh, and the news is a dangerous place sometimes. You know, it really it, we're at a we're at a time where more people have more access to more information, which this should be like a golden age. And mm-hmm. then at the same time, with all that, you have the opportunity to spread misinformation. I, I was talking to my mom, and she's uh, you know she's very old school and thinks that you know the internet is you know if you make eye contact with the internet, it's going to steal your soul, damn near. And uh, I've I've always said to her that you know the scams. A lot of the scams are the same. It's just the delivery method has changed. Right. You know, a Ponzi scheme before uh, in a letter is now a Ponzi scheme that maybe comes an email, et cetera. The one that scares me off topic, since we were talking about the USB ports, mm-hmm. is the only time I use my credit card to is when I get gas. And I know that I, there's, I've seen warnings where people can put a fake, like a, a little mount on there that actually – when it goes, when you use your card, it takes your information, right. and then they can just pull that off later. Wow! Um, so there's maybe a radio topic right there. Could be, yeah. Because otherwise, I don't think I, I don't. Unless you have an electric car, you don't have to worry about that. That's true. That's true. Well, so there's, there's, there's that. That's the whole idea and the principle behind having electric cars <laughs> that people go. can't steal your your information at gas pumps anymore. Yeah, but you have to plug that into a USB <laughs> though. You got, that's how you're charging that that's car. That's how you charge the car. That's how you charge it. So with content, so here's yes. a question for you. With content. Um, I was reading an article, and one of the things that this article was talking about, it was the Wall Street Journal. It was talking about compliance, but it mentioned this in a different, a different um, vein that I hadn't thought of. It said compliance exposure. And where they were going with it, they were talking about, one, compliance, making sure everything's you're, you're complied. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then also with that visibility – for, for the audience visibility at the same time, you've got maybe regulator visibility. How do you do your compliance? Um, do you just personally just keep it up at a high, make sure you're at 10,000 feet, or do you run it by somebody? Or So some of my radio is live, so it's uh-huh. difficult to run that through compliance, sure. right? Because you never know. Like we're talking today, we're talking about many things that it'd be impossible to Unless we had an absolute script that we're yeah. going to stick to, which, which, would be boring. which you can't do. So mm-hmm. um, I think you just, over time, you have to learn mm-hmm. that uh, what you can and what you can't say. Of course, you can't ever guarantee anything. Yep. 
You can't, uh, you don't want to state statistics unless you can back those up, right? Well, I wrote uh, mine down. <laughs> or articles maybe that you're referencing. Uh-huh. I may talk about a CNBC article or a Wall Street Journal, as you just mentioned, article. Um, so it's not me may, maybe that's saying that. I mean, maybe yeah. repeating it, but the data is coming from, you know, a, a reliable source or, or at least a source mm-hmm. that you're noting. So, And then also all of our radio spots, whether it's a commercial or it's a live spot or it's a show, mm-hmm. all get sent back to compliance. And they archive all of those. I'm sure they do random checks to make sure that I'm – uh, not saying something I shouldn't be saying, uh, and also making sure that I'm utilizing our disclosures that we have to. You yeah, know, yeah. I, it's so funny because I have our securities and advisory services offered through client with securities LSD, a member of a member <laughs> and investment advisor, right? So, and so when I'm doing a live spot and I only have a, a short period of time and I've got to say that disclosure, it's funny. We talk about it, even have done segments on it. Why I have to say that disclosure, number one. But why am I saying it so fast at times? Well, it's because I only have this this couple of minutes mm-hmm, to talk mm-hmm, about, and I'm mm-hmm. not going to do a 30 second disclosure. I'm going to do it in five seconds. You know, that's my goal is to get that disclosure in five seconds live. Uh, that's a mouthful live. That is a mouthful, and it wasn't. Now it's not client one anymore. It's creative one. I'm sorry, securities. We have a we have a swear jar a version of that. That uh-huh. when, we, when we switch the names, you got to put right. a dollar in. Uh-huh. I still once once that gets in my head, then it's hard for me to not say the old name right versus the new name. Mm-hmm. But uh, that, that's interesting. So how often are you live? I, I thought every you were, almost every day I do a live spot as well. As well as my radio show, I do a live spot on a local um, talk show host's uh, segment. Mm. I'll get in there and I'll do a live spot. And I could do more if I want to. I mean, I have good relationships with all the radio stations because of, you know, what I've, uh, you know, been working with them for all these years. Uh, The other thing is, is that if there's a a big event that occurred, like when we had uh, COVID hit, or Mm -hmm. if we had a major drop in the stock market, or when we had the bank failure, I could usually pick up the phone, call one of the radio stations and say, hey, look, um, this just happened. Do you want me to come on and talk about it uh, at any time throughout the day? And oftentimes I'll get a hit back from, you know, one of the local talk show hosts, uh, and they'll put me in for five minutes or whatever it's going to be. Yeah, just to talk about that. Uh, So... I don't, I don't do a lot of that because I just don't have the time in my calendar to do that because no. oftentimes they might call me and say, hey, can John, can you come on at 3 o'clock, you know, and, and talk about this? And I'm like, well, no, I have an appointment at 3 o'clock, you know, but I could do it at 3.35 or whatever it's going to be, and, but it may not work with their schedule because they have other guests that are sure. coming on their, their show as well. But sometimes I could make that work for them if they call me, uh, and I don't normally reach out any longer. I used to do it more mm-hmm. frequently, mm-hmm. but I just don't have the time now to do that any longer. So you're doing the live spots, and you used to be live every day. Every day. I used to do an hour Golly. a day live from 5, drive time, 5 to 6 p.m. And it was a uh, uh, people, if they wanted to call in, they could call in too. I'd take live callers. Um, and, of course, that's always interesting because someone calls yeah. up, hey, should I buy X number, you know, should I buy this stock? Should I buy that? Of course, I can't give advice over that phone, yeah. over the phone on that. Crypto. Yeah. Uh, but again, you, that's where you have to dance around a little bit mm-hmm. and say, well, it's a great company, you know, whatever the Johnson and Johnson, it's a great company, you know, and, but uh, I think I couldn't rec- recommend buying that based on, you know, just talking to you over the phone sure. here, you know, you need to do some research. If you're working with a financial advisor, certainly run that by them. I don't know what your overall outlook is and time horizon and, and risk tolerance, uh, but uh, if you don't have an advisor, hey, give me a call sure. offline, and we'll sit down and chat about it and see how we can help you through this. So you were doing, but live calls, that, God, that just sounds fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I, some people may think that's scary, but God, that, that just sounds like it'd be a, a blast. It, it, it was good, but anyway, I didn't get a lot of callers. Yeah. Was, because, again, it wasn't a station that was very uh, well listened to. It, was, it, was a, uh, it, was, it happened to be a Christian station mm-hmm. that I was on. Uh, so... The people that I did get from that station, very loyal people. Um, it was great, that the community that we're dealing with there. Uh, but I needed to get to a, a, a station that had much more uh, depth and more uh, reach. Yeah, yeah. And so over time, I was able to do that. And now I'm on uh, radio stations that are the highest, have the highest listenership mm-hmm. uh, in the Valley. And they're national 
national uh, stations. I actually was uh, looking up and learned a little bit about Nielsen ratings. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was doing some doing yeah. some research. I was checking out the channels. Does does the radio station so? They're, are they iHeart Radio? Uh, one of the stations I'm on is iHeart, and they do give us the Nielsen ratings. And they also do, uh, they have ratings for our show versus other shows. And, and, you know, during that hour, they can tell how many people are listening. And so they give me those stats, which is good. They feel good about my show, where it's at, positioned well. And um, they, want, of course, want someone representing their station. Sure. You know, well as as the, as can be, you know, so that they're getting good quality mm-hmm. um, content on their station. So you were doing daily. You were doing a ton of work for that. <clears throat> yes. Now you're doing the show um, once a week. Once a week on Saturdays. Saturdays. Three different stations, three different times. It's not live. I record it, and then we just shoot it out to the stations. Do you miss the live versus recording? You know what I liked about the live was uh, if, 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 I'm work, if I had a guest on the show, which I do have guests on the show, mm-hmm. and that's, that's a way for you to fill that time. And uh, I have oftentimes maybe a CPA, an attorney, uh, maybe you bring on a Medicare specialist from time to time. And these are all clients of mine as well as uh, referral sources for us. Mm-hmm. And I don't charge them to be on the show, but I would say that it probably would be a good, thing if someone's getting started with this, if you wanted to get mm-hmm. another professional that's going to help be a referral source for you, you're promoting them for sure when they're on your radio show. So why not, you know, maybe charge them for that? It's a good idea. You know, so it can subsidize your cost a bit uh, because it can be very expensive. I mean, there's a lot for us to talk about when it comes to radio and we're, we've just, you know, scratched the yeah. surface and I'm sure we're coming up on maybe a timeline for you on your podcast here, but we could talk about this for hours no. and hours and lose people's, uh, you know, they'd be falling asleep they as we're talking not. about it. <laughs> well, you know, so one of the, you know, one of the big questions um, is cost and is ROI. Yeah. So how do you measure that? How do you, so we have multiple things that I want to talk about. Sure, so I'm going to let you. ROI, so ROI is something definitely. Yes. But I'm also curious about how you introduce yourself how do you how do you do that on a radio station without without sounding like you're selling too hard? Because you know, you, I've, somebody one time said sales breath. Like that guy's got sales breath, where they right. just try pushing too hard, and you don't hear that on your radio station. It almost you know you're on your show. Yeah. You're very much this is this is who I am. It's I don't, content. It's just really talking about things. It's not. It's not. It's like what we're doing right here. Mm-hmm. We haven't sold anything here. We're not trying to sell anything here. We're just talking. And yeah. that is, I think, what you have to do to talk to the people out there instead of, I, I listen to some, um, and I always joke about this, which is on a Saturday, uh, you have probably 10 different financial advisors doing a radio show. Mm-hmm. And so how do you differentiate yourself from that? And I try to listen to some of these shows, and it's very difficult for me to listen. And maybe people say that about my show. I don't know, but but I would say it's very difficult for me to listen to some of them talk in such a monotone voice mm-hmm. about annuities, as an example. Okay, and that's what they're selling. You absolutely know that's what they're selling. And uh, and I always question myself, thinking, "Gee, am I doing something wrong? Should I be doing that? Are they getting better results than me?" Mm-hmm. Because that's they're talking about one product, one thing, and maybe that's what people want to listen to for an hour. I don't know, but I'm I know not so sure. I'm. I would be. I am yeah. so bored listening to that that I turn it off. I try to keep it on, but I just can't do it. So. Um, I, I, I pick four topics to talk about, five topics to talk about during that hour. And one might be about a USB port in an mm-hmm, airport. Mm-hmm. Another might be about, hey, it's tax filing deadline coming up on Tuesday, uh, you know, this year. Hopefully you've done all the things you needed to do. And if you haven't, make sure you still at least pay your taxes mm-hmm. and file that extension so that you're not going to, you know, and that has nothing to do with me you know, and offering a, client, a product. Yeah. Yeah. But what it does do is it starts to show people that I'm a real person. I'm just talking in general about things. And then at the end of that segment, though, 
they're going to hear. Hi, this is John Dombrowski again. Hey, just as always, if you've got questions, anything financial, pick up that phone, give me a call at this number or that number and check. If you have a question for me, uh, send me a Dear John email to dearjohn at thewordonwealth.com. And, uh, you know, so that's just a little bit of some way for them to get a hold of me. If you'd like to schedule a complimentary consultation, just pick up the phone, give us a shout, go to our website, send me an email, you know, so Mm -hmm. at the end. So that's that last 15 seconds of that segment, they're going to get a little something. And then on the opening, it's the same thing. So there's my call to action. Uh, When I open, hey, we're back. John Dombrowski here. This is The Word on Wealth. Again, just real quick, a couple ways to get a hold of me Mm -hmm. and then into the topic. So do you... Are you able to see or track? I mean, tracking those dollars that you're spending mm-hmm. back to a client, is is it something you're able to do easily? Or is it, you know, a lot of times people listen, 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 and then finally come in because they, they know you and trust you. And, and, and so it's hard to pinpoint exactly maybe what show or, or maybe we what ask. channel. We ask. We you? ask. You know, we, that's part of our, when people walk in the door, you know, you go into a doctor's office, they give you the, the uh, clipboard. Mm-hmm. And we do the same thing. They get a clipboard when they walk into the office, and we ask them to fill out the general information, the name, the address, the phone numbers. We ask for Social Security, dates of birth. Some people put them down. Some don't. Mm -hmm. Perfectly fine. Uh, Whatever information they give us at that open, we take. Uh, And then during our, um, you know, initial meeting, we're asking more and more questions, getting more and more information. Uh, And one of those important questions is, is how did you hear about us? Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, oh, oh, radio. Okay, well, what stations do you listen to? And we have that on the questionnaire that they're filling out. They heard us on this or that Mm -hmm. station. So we can kind of pinpoint that. But the thing is, is we do so much advertising and, you know, all over that oftentimes they check all the boxes. I've heard you on this. I've heard you on that. I've seen your ad. I've, you know, uh, someone told me about you. So... It's, it's hard to really then understand exactly where that came from. Mm-hmm. And then your other question was, how do you track the ROI on it? Yeah. Uh, and we certainly can do that as well. We, of course, input everything into our system, and we can run the reports of, of, of where the money came from, how much we've made on a client. Uh, and we know how much we spend because those credit card bills have to get paid every month. And radio is, without going into specific numbers, but it's expensive. It's expensive. You have to have a... a, a uh, stomach for that that budget that you're going to have to create for radio. It's if you want to do a radio show, now you can minimize that expense if you want to, maybe by just running commercials rather than doing a radio show, because you're buying an hour of time four times a month. It's oh. expensive. So selling the commercials to it sounds so naive, but selling the commercials, can you can you you could sublet? you could sell sell some time throughout your show. Uh, if you wanted to sell commercials, but I'm talking about you could, instead of doing a radio show, if mm-hmm. you want to do radio, you could just do commercials and mm-hmm. buy commercial time. And if you want to buy 20 commercial spots, 20 minutes a week, maybe four to five spots a day, mm-hmm. uh, you can do that. So that's a way to get started in radio. Just do a, a minute commercial or even a two minute commercial or even a three minute commercial if you wanted to, as we talked earlier, uh, where you talk about a specific topic and it could be you know, hey, this is Mark Smith with your uh, Mark Smith Financial Group, you know, yeah. Financial Minute or yeah. Financial, you know, uh, Moment, whatever it's going to be. And you talk about a specific topic. You know, today I just wanted to drop in and talk about X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you have questions about this and want to learn more about it, hey, give us a call or go to our website. So it can be a quick uh, introduction, get your name out there, and but be consistent with it. And if you're going to do radio, I would say – like any other marketing strategy, make a commitment of time yeah. that you're going to do it for, no matter what the result, because it's going to take time. You know, I was going to ask you about that because there's a. I know that when I when you look up how many financial advisors are on radio, you yeah. know, in a given metro, it's a lot. It's a lot. But the real question, you know, is who's been there? How long have they been there? You know, why? I, that was one thing I was curious about. That I don't know that you and I have the answer for. Probably but, not. But yeah. you know, how long? What's what's the average duration of somebody? When do they when did they give up? Did you have moments of wavering? Yeah. So I used to do the five day a week show, mm-hmm. and then I had also Saturday, so I was doing six days of radio. The five day a week show probably brought me less revenue mm-hmm. than the Saturday show did. Mm. So for the longest time. I kept that five days a week on a lower listenership station, but 
I still did it, even though I knew I wasn't getting the results. It was still a way for me to get my name out there. Sure. And so I looked at it more as a form of branding and advertising rather than really a call to action. Um, and it also was helping me learn and learn and learn and get better and better and better mm -hmm. at what I did. So, but at a, once I got to a point where I was so busy, I just couldn't do five days a week anymore. It just it became too much of a burden. It's a lot. That's a ton yeah. of work. I, yeah. can't, I, I can vaguely imagine. Yeah. So I would run from an appointment, get into the booth, and I'd just start talking for an hour. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even, it wasn't even uh, something that I was preparing for any longer. It was just too hard. I didn't have the time. Uh, and then after the hour, five to six, then I'd have a six o'clock appointment waiting in the lobby for me. And so I'd do the six o'clock appointment and then, you know, start over all day, you know, the next oh, day. It was yeah. a groundhog day kind of thing. Uh, so eventually when I did let go of that, I felt so good. It was just... Well, it, it had to have been hard yeah. to let it go, though. It was extremely hard to let it go because it was a great time, that five to six time. Fun. As well as, uh, you know, it was just I've been doing it for so long. Yeah. So... Now, we hadn't talked about your practice, but um, you have a, an amazing, successful practice. Um, you've got a great staff. You've got, uh, you've got great office dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, you do. have an amazing wife that it, just such a supportive Part of the practice. team as well. Yeah, she yeah. works at the office as well. Yeah. As you look forward with radio, one of the things that I know that um, in my wife's car, she has uh, that Sirius uh, XM, Sat yeah, XM, yeah, the satellite mm -hmm. radio. How big of a challenge do you think that's going to be? What do you think that's going to mean for the uh, advisor radio market? Well, I would say this, that that's been there a long time. XM's been out there a long time. Uh, I, I don't really think it has, has had a negative impact on the Saturday morning talk shows that mm -hmm. the advisors have. Um, I don't listen to the AM radio. I listen to XM. That's what I listen to because mm -hmm. I'm looking for financial news and I'm looking for sure. you know content and things that I and things I want to hear about. Uh, I do listen to podcasts like mm -hmm. yours, as an example. Thank you. Feel yes. free to like, subscribe. Anyone who's out there, leave some <laughs> comments. We love that too. Um, so there are other ways of uh, my listening mm -hmm. now that it probably has affected you know the AM, and but I still think it's there and. Boy, I'll tell you, you want to buy a radio spot, it's going to be expensive. Why is that? Because there's a lot of people still trying to buy time on AM radio. So I don't think AM radio is going anywhere. That's so, a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay, so last question. Boom, all of a sudden we have a time machine. We go back to the beginning of your radio dynasty. Yes. You get the opportunity to talk to yourself and give yourself a couple words of wisdom to young John uh, so your dear John letter, your dear John advice to young John would be? Boy, that's a great question. Um, I think what I've said even during this podcast, which would be um, if you're going to make that commitment, be prepared. Um, set a budget for yourself, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, be prepared uh, to do it for at least one year, maybe even two. Don't expect tremendous results immediately. Mm-hmm. Because you have to build trust. People have to hear you over and over and over again. And it'd be the same in any form of print advertising that you do too, Dennis, right? I would, yep. I would, I would think that, you know, you don't expect you're going to put an ad in the newspaper one day and you're just going to get all these responses. But if that ad is continually uh, run, mm -hmm. uh, people see it over and over and over again. And eventually when the time is right, your name is in front of them and they pick up the phone and they call you. And someone said to me, which I thought was a very good analogy, it's almost like a parade. Mm. You've got the parade that goes around the block, and they, they're playing that same song over <laughs> and over and over again. But you only heard it once because mm -hmm. you were standing on the northeast corner. When they got to the southwest corner, they're playing the same song, but there's a different group of people hearing it. Yep. Right? So you're playing the same song over and over and over again. Eventually... You say, oh, my gosh, I've got to call Dennis because yeah. I want to be on his podcast. I have to tell right. you, I, I like that analogy so much. I just wrote it down. That's All right. great. Super. That's great. Okay, John, thank you for being on the podcast. Um, you have a ton of... Yeah, just a, that was a, a, a ton of awesome information. One other thing I would say is, is uh, that... 
your radio show doesn't necessarily have to be the same name as your firm. That's a good point because your firm is Grand, Grand right. Canyon Planning. But the radio show is the word on wealth. Mm -hmm. So they could be two separate things. You know, so it doesn't have to, but it could be sponsored by. Exactly. You know, Grand, brought to you by Grand Canyon Planning. I don't know how many people would tune into like Matter and Financial. Uh, versus versus the word on wealth. Yeah. I mean, the one catchy title. and Well, and, uh, it was on a Christian station originally, mm -hmm. the word on wealth. So it was, it was kind of a play on words there. Very nice. John, thanks for being on here. Thanks, uh, Dennis. Appreciate uh, it. I know I'm going to catch you for another episode, and then anytime you're uh, coming through that chair, there's a spot right there. Maybe we can get a piano in. Maybe oh, no. Play a little bit. No, no, no. Um, for everybody else, uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, don't forget, like, subscribe. Send an email to your friends and say, check out this episode. Uh, put it in a letter. Uh, but we're on everywhere, so anything from uh, Apple, uh, Amazon, Google, Spotify, you can catch us on YouTube, you can watch us there. Uh, but feel free to shoot comments. Uh, I would love to know what you're thinking. And uh, feel free, oh, also, golly, uh, go ahead and review us and, and rate us. That would be great too. So John, thanks for being on here. Thank you, Dennis, appreciate it. This podcast is for financial professional use only and not for use with the general public. The information provided is the exclusive property of Creative One and is protected by copyright and other intellectual property laws of the United States. This material has been prepared for informational and educational purposes only. It is not intended to provide, and should not be relied upon for, accounting, legal, tax or investment advice. Creative One is not responsible for the results of programs discussed on this podcast or any liability stemming from the use of it. Although we may promote or recommend the services offered by this company, agents are ultimately responsible for the use of any materials or services and agree to comply with the compliance requirements of their broker-dealer and registered investment advisor, if applicable, and the insurance carriers they represent. Copyright 2022, Creative One Marketing Corporation.